silent I will always worship you as long as I am breathing I will always worship before you as a sweet smelling savour. Jesus is you we see. It is you we choose to see. In the midst of the storm and the challenges of life, we lift up our eyes and we see you. 
We look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. And we know that because you live, we live also. We know that because you live, then our storms cannot take us down. We choose to see you, Jesus. We choose to exalt you, Jesus. And we take authority over every imagination and everything that has exalted itself against the knowledge of God in the lives of the people. We pull them down in the name of Jesus. We declare that your throne is established in this house. And your throne is established in the life of the people. Oh, let God be through and let every other thing be a lie in the mighty name of Jesus. For who is it that saith and it cometh to pass when the Lord has not spoken? Only the counsel of the Lord shall prevail. Woman, I don't know what you are going through, but the counsel of the Lord stands. Oh, for that child that you have been crying for, I said the counsel of the Lord stands. Hey, for that child that looks as if the devil has the final say, I come as God's prophet and I speak that only the counsel of the Lord stands in the life of that child. In the mighty name of Jesus, we don't see what the devil is doing. We refuse to see it. We see what God is doing and we call her a prophetess. We call him a prophet of God. We call them mighty men and mighty women of valor. Oh yes, men and women that will speak at the gate. That is what we see. That is what we prophesy. We refuse to be deterred. In the mighty name of Jesus. Woman, I call you a woman of strength. I call you a woman of worth. I call you a woman of beauty. I call you a woman of enormous capacity. You will not go down. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is not the end. The Bible said the latter end is greater than the former. So I speak your glorious future. I prophesy your glorious future. I prophesy your glorious future. It is well with you. It is well with you. It is well with your husband. It is well with your household. It is well with your businesses. It is well with your finances. It is well with your body. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give the Lord a shout as you take your seat. Hallelujah. Our God is awesome. I want to honor our mommy and our dad in absentia for the privilege to be here and for the privilege to be able to declare the word of the Lord. We do not see it as a right. We see it as a privilege. And for those of you that are in this couple of prayers I want to take, but I think I will take them at the end. I bring you greetings from members of my ministry, my husband, wonderful man of God that has just released his wife to the Lord. It takes a man that has been schooled, prepared. Mama said something yesterday, and when we were getting married, uh, we didn't really have 10 steps to get a husband. Five steps to know if he's right. Should I marry, should I not marry? We just married by the Spirit and somewhere a little bit of foolishness that God allowed because if we were wise, we would have chosen in our wisdom and would have chosen the wrong person uh, for whatever reason. But the Lord saw our future. For me, the Lord saw my future and he gave me a husband that has been very, very supportive. Very, very supportive. I, I travel a lot. I travel, I'm in Abuja every month. I'm in Lagos every month, almost every month, outside other cities. So how many days do I stay in the house? But you have a man that will always tell you, it's God, go after it, go after it. So I honor him, and I honor all the men in this house that support their wives. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please keep doing that. The truth of the matter is that your reward will be great in heaven. Because for a lot of us, this was not the profession we chose. For a lot of us, this was not the profession. But we just saw that the Lord's hand was on our life and we followed through. And for me, yes, there's been a lot of hurts, a lot of spites, a lot of misunderstanding, but there's also been a lot of blessings. And one of the blessings is the ability for you to be able to meet people. 
from all walks of life, from different places in the world. You, you, are, you have the privilege to just mingle with the children of God. And there's such a beauty that comes from that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, Psalm 68 verse 11. If you have NIV translation, I'll prefer that. Or ESV or NESV. Not King James. I don't know what women did to King James. So give me ESV of this particular scripture. If you have amplified uh, NESV, uh, N, uh, which other one? NIV. NIV is a popular one. Thank you very much. Woman, you are made for more. Now let me start by saying that you can't have more without a vision for more. Oh, you can't have more without the sight that there is a place there that is better. There is a place called more that is attainable, that is achievable. Yes, it will take effort, it will take strength, it will take tenacity, it will take resilience, it will take a lot of things. But first of all, you must have the vision. Because the Bible said without vision, what happens? The people do what? They perish. So Psalm 68 verse 11 said, the Lord announced the word. And great was the company of those who proclaimed this. Please give me the other one that carries women. Remove NIV. Thank you. The Lord gives the word. The women who bear and publish the news are a great host. The Lord gives the word. And the company, the people that bear the glad tidings. As a matter of fact, a woman was the first female evangelist. Yes, he called 12. And he called them that he would be with, they would be with him. And that he would send them forth. So he took them through a training process. And we see where he told them to tarry until they were endued with the Holy Ghost. But you see, there was this woman, this woman that didn't have time to even be with him. This woman that didn't know of the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, she was a woman that had a lot of issues. Because I don't understand how a woman will go to fetch water at midday. Oh, the only reason why that woman will do that is because she has become the talk of the town. You know, and in my, in my imagination, I try to want to understand the woman at the well of Sychar. You know, a lot of us have criticized her and a lot of us have called her prostitute. But you know, the Bible did not really say that. The Bible said this woman has been with five men and the one she is with right now is is not her husband. No, the Bible did not say that she was a prostitute. He said she had been with five men because there was a, a, a situation where the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they came together and they came to the Lord and they said, sir, there was a woman that married one and he died and married the second and he died and married the third and he died and married the fifth to the seventh at the resurrection. Who will be her husband? And then you are wondering about five it's not possible. How about Tamar? So I don't know the case with this woman. And I want to believe that even if she didn't plan in her mind that she wanted to mess up her, her life and mess up the lives of five other men. So she had become a public spectacle. The women in the town will look at her they will guard their husbands from her. When she wants to send a child on errand, they will say, ah, you know if you keep your own, you won't send my own message. So much talk. And such that, because if you are in Nigeria, and if you have not been to the eastern part of Nigeria, at least one way or the other, you must have watched home video. Oh, yes. So you know that they go to the stream. To get water. And you don't go when the sun is high. No, you go either early in the morning or late in the evening. But this lady went at midday. And when she knew that no woman would be there. 
Or when she knew. And I can imagine her carrying her water pot in the heat of the day. And then she's, she, every time she takes that walk, something in her was crying. How did I get here? And then she looks at her life. John, um, Abdul, oh, Tejiri, uh, Moses. How then she goes back. No, no, no. When I, when I was a young girl, I, I, there was a way I planned my life. I was going to just marry this one. But how did John and Abdul and Moses, and you see, every day she was going to get water. Her, her life was before her. She was recounting the stories of her life. Nobody wanted to be with her. She was like a plague that could not be touched. She was like that leprous person that you put outside. But this day, this day, this lady was counting and she was moving and looking at her life. But you see, heaven had taken note that there was this woman that needed attention. For Jesus himself said, I must need pass through Samaria. No, he didn't say it's by mistake. No, 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 no. I have an assignment. I must need pass through Samaria. That when heaven was writing the script of Jesus Christ, heaven looked into the woman of the well of Sychar, which called her a prostitute, but heaven saw a worshiper. We call her a prostitute, but heaven saw an evangelist. The very first woman that through her testimony was able to win an entire city. Hey, immediately Christ reached at her. She ran into the city and she began to evangelize and she began to announce and she began to declare and the Bible said the entire city, they moved to Christ and they said now we have believed not just for your testimony but because we have heard her she was called a prostitute but the very woman that gave us the concept of worship for she said sir I have a problem uh, this thing is not my problem my parents said we should worship here the Jews said worship there where that was a woman with debt she brought the revelation of worship in the spirit she looked and saw beyond what she was going through. The Lord gave the word. And great was the company of those that published it. So the woman at the well of Sychar was one of the first to go out with the gospel and win an entire city. And then we have another woman. The woman that they cast out seven devils. Woman with a lot of issues. But you see this woman. She was a worshiper. She understood worship. She knows how expensive this hair is. And she didn't care. She had this alabaster box that she had kept. I don't know how long. It was her prized possession. Such that when it was broken. Huh? Even the disciples were jealous. Huh? Uh, what is this thing? Huh? How can't you give it to the poor? Huh? But this woman knows huh, that my jewelry huh, is only for him. Huh? My voice huh, is only for him. Huh? My beauty huh, is only for him. Huh? My shape huh, is only for him. Huh? Hey, Do we have women huh, that want to use everything huh, that God has given to them huh, to preach the gospel? And this woman went, she was a timely woman. She understood times and seasons. That when others decided, let's go and anoint his body, she had already done it. Oh, Jesus. That's a word for women. And that's a word for men. Ah, tick says the clock. Tick, tick. That that assignment that the Lord is giving to you, if you don't hurry to do it, uh, Reinhard Bonke said, uh, when God called him to Africa, he was not the first person, not the second. I, I listened to him live. Uh, he said he was the fifth person. Uh, Catherine Kuhlman said uh, that that job God gave to a man, uh, that man rejected it, uh, and then she took it up. Uh, God, kingdom crowns are transferable. Uh, did you hear me? 
I say kingdom crowns are transferable. For a Moses, there's always a Joshua. Oh, Jesus, for a Saul, a better neighbor called David. Don't think you are too fine for God. The beautiful ones are not yet born. Oh, don't think you are too packaged for God. Oh, don't think you are too on point for God. Don't think you have too much money for God. Hey, the end of the earth belongs to him. The cattle on the thousand hills belongs to him. He's the creator of beauty. He's beauty personified. He's the one that colored the rainbows. He knows he when you look at a woman huh, and sees the way the, the Lord sets us, huh, you know our God is beautiful. Huh? Oh, Shiga, but do I have women in the house? Do I have women in the house huh, that want to celebrate your femininity? And this woman went to the grave and didn't see her Lord. And the men went there. But you see, a woman is persistent. A woman stayed. They ran there. They didn't see the Lord. They took off, but not Martha. She stood. She waited. A woman will wait. A woman will wait. She stood there, crying, and just musing to herself until she... Rabboni. She knows that voice. She has heard it before. Oh, initially she thought it was the gardener. When he spoke, she was like, oh, oh, please, I don't want any disturbance. My only problem right now is that they have taken away my Lord. And I don't know where they laid him. Uh, even his dead body is useful to me. Just show me where you laid him. And I will take him and I will be on my way. And Jesus looked at her. Oh, God, such love for womanhood that he was willing to risk redemption. Jesus, you don't understand that when a high priest carries the blood and once in a year begin to go into the holies of holies, it's a journey that is prepared for a lifetime because the very essence of Israel depends on his priesthood. So you can imagine in your mind that the high priest enters this hall and all of Israel, they are outside. Oh, wait, wait, what's our fate? What's our fate? And this day, the high priest comes out and oh, everybody, oh, praise the Lord. And then some days, only God knows what happened. And he dies. And he can't even go there to get his body. They pull him out. Oh, I was giving this thing a thought. And I asked myself that if he died, because the Bible said it was covering for a year, does it mean that immediately there was another high priest that would go in? And I think the answer is a no. Because if you look at the Bible, it said at the time of the evening sacrifice. So it means that even sacrifices were, were time targeted. That if he missed it at that time, then the entire Israelites will go for one year in their sin, in their pains, waiting for salvation. So this Christ, the Bible tells us that by one sacrifice, by one sacrifice, he came as the high priest and he came as the lamb. Oh, I can imagine Father God. Romans 8.32 tells us that he that spared not his own son, but gave him up as a ransom. Have you ever given that scripture a thought? What that scripture means is that this day Father Abraham carried his son and was going and to go and sleep lay him. And the son said, my father, I know sacrifice. I've seen this and I've seen that. Where is the lamb? And he said, don't worry. And then he got to the place and took that child and bound him. And all of a sudden he took his hand to strike him. But God held his hand. God spared Isaac. But when he got to Christ, he that spared not. So when God lifted his hands to strike Christ, there was no God to hold God. There was no God to say, no, there's a lamb. No, 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 no. Ah, he sacrificed his son. Why? Because of love. Because of me. Oh, Jesus, if there's nobody that should appreciate Christ, women, you should appreciate Christ. Because those days, men we go before him three times a year. We were not included. Mm, can I preach? Well, can I preach? That when a woman is seeing her period, she's not permitted to come to the temple. 
Oh, and even after she's done, another seven days. So if you are that kind of woman that sits for seven days, another seven days, that's 14 days. Two weeks, you cannot come. Before you count it, it has passed. But you see, because of the redemption that we have in Christ Jesus, we can come. Not just come, but boldly. We can come boldly by the blood of Jesus. He gave us a name. He gave us status. He gave us a place where the world say the woman is nothing. The redemptive work of the blood of Jesus gave us something. Gave us beauty. Gave us microphone. Gave us empires. Celebrate the Lord. So Christ was willing to risk all that he went through for a woman. He knows that as a high priest, you should not be touched until you are done. But you see, as he carried the blood and he was going to the throne to put the blood seven times in the heavenly sanctuary, he saw this woman that was so filled with love. And this woman that has said, I will not go until I know where they have taken my love to. And he had to stop by. Woman, I'm saying to you that today, heaven stopped because of you. Oh, did you hear me? I said, for that woman that has been crying, oh, that's why I came from Delta State, that heaven came to a pause because of you. That your cry has reached the ears of the Father. And the Father has sent me. He said, Moses, I have heard the cries of the Israelites. You go. So when you see a man or a woman come to you, it is heaven's letter to you. Uh, it is heaven's person to you. It is heaven's gift to you. That that weeping that you have been weeping, you will weep no more. Amen. Oh, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, he has prevailed. Ha! Glory to God. Glory to God. The lion of the tribe of Judah. He has prevailed. He has broken the seals. He has loosened the seals. And he has opened the book. And the book is about me. Oh, I don't know about you. You have your mouth. <laughs> that is about me. It's a story about a young girl that was giving birth to in the city of Jaws. A story about a young girl that the Lord said I would take you to places. A story about a young girl that got married in the year 2000. And the Lord pulled me out of Lagos to the city of Sapla, not knowing anybody. And I was wondering, God, ah, from a city from just to Lagos to Sapla, ah, my father, is this the life that you have for me? And the Lord said, look, when I'm taking you through process, ah, like David, I put you in the hole. Ah, you must go to the cave of Adunam ah, because I don't need influence on your life. Ah, when you are in Lagos, because you have this, you have that, you have that. And when you are at Abuja, you have a lot of things. I have brothers here and all of that. He said, but I'll take you to a place where you know nobody. No friend, no mother, no sister, nothing. And I went there and the Lord said, do ministry. Do ministry without knowing one person. I didn't grow up in Delta State. I grew up in the north, not having any friend. Nothing. And the Lord said, this is your training ground. When you conquer Sapple, then I will take you to the world. That's the book. And that place became my threshing floor. That place became my field. That place I met the Lord. Oh, that place I saw him. Several times I've been faced with things that are life-threatening. But you see, I've learned how to lay on the floor. And I've learned how to know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that because he lives, I can live also. Oh, I know what it means to not have. And I also know what it means to have. I know what it means to manage. I know what it means for your children to be asking you for something and you don't have it. Not because you don't have a degree. Immediately I finished from the university I did my master's uh, and started my PhD. Uh, I was through with my coursework. Uh, about to go into the project uh, when the Lord said that is not what I called you for. Let it go. Oh Jesus. I was the best graduating student both as master's level and undergraduate level. 
department and faculty. So it wasn't that I was dull. Ah, but you see, for the cause of you, because the Lord knows that he will bring me in touch with you. And when I come to you, I will not come ah, with words. I will come with power. When I come, I will not come to tell you stories because there must be a shift in your life. Ah, by the time I am out of here, you will know that you met with the Lord. Ah, you can be saying that she's boasting. Yes, the psalmist said, I will make my boast in the Lord because it is not really me. It is Christ in me. The hope of glory church I am sent from the back side of the desert I learned how to pray I learned how to hold the forth I learned how to persevere some of my classmates in secondary school they see me and they say Fanny you became a pastor I said me sir but this story really will not be complete if I don't give honor to my mother. Oh, because we're nine in our family. Seven of us are pastors. Jesus. I saw a mother that every night, there was no night, I would wake up in the middle of the night to ease myself, that I would not hear her tongue in. I will not hear her tongue in. She prayed and prayed and prayed. I'm sure she's so worried, God, that God said, take, 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 and See that all of us to God. And even the last one, the eight, uh, that was like, you know, when you have five girls. And this particular child is like the one you pray and pray for. Oh, Jesus. You know that girl? That's like what the four did not do. I want to do all for them. <laughs> Glory to God. And every time I will see my mother, she'll be on her knees. And she'll be praying and calling that child. And calling that child. And one day she came out from the place of prayer. Her name is Egwono. She said, Egwono, I change your name. You are no longer Egwono. You are Onome, my own. Not for the devil. Not for. That lady got married to Winner's pastor. They just got back a couple of weeks back from Zambia as missionaries. Oh, Jesus. This mother didn't relent. Things were not always good. She sold her wrappers. She sold her clothes. Uh, several times in school, there was no food. And she would come and she would just, from her sumabe, just say, Fanny, you know how we be? Oh, manage this. Uh, some of you came from package home. You had everything intact. Uh, but some of us know we are the Bruce Reed uh, out of the dry ground. We came uh, without form and comeliness. Uh, so when you see beauty and packaging, uh, it is him. Oh, Jesus. And Jesus stood for love for this woman. And all of a sudden, what do we see? She wanted to touch him. And he said, don't touch me. Don't touch me. I just wanted to talk to you. And then he left to do the sacrifice. And the sacrifice was accepted. And then he came back to the earth. And he said, Thomas... Touch me. The reason why Thomas can't touch is because the sacrifice has been accepted. So we see that a woman, you have challenges. What are the challenges? I'm, I'm picking figures in the Bible. Yours might be like that woman that was caught in the act of adultery. You don't know how you found yourself where you found yourself. And Jesus wrote. And someone asked me a question somewhere I went to preach. He said, Pastor Fanny, what did he write? I said, I don't know. But peradventure, he was scribbling a new script for her. Peradventure, he was saying, go and sin no more. Peradventure, he was saying, I love you with an everlasting love. For adventure, he was saying, I see you bruised and battered. I see your story. And I see the disgrace that you were caught in the very act with a man. And the man was not brought. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Because this woman was not committing adultery with herself. 
She committed adultery with somebody and she was caught in the very act. And that man was let to go. And this one came. So peradventure, you are that wife in the house. And you are saying, God, look at my home, look at my family. And they are saying culture allows your husband to take more than one. And culture allows a man to be promiscuous. Remember the Bible said by their tradition, they made vain the word of God. But listen to me, church. He bent down and he wrote your story. It's a story of love. It's a story that said he that has the first stone would also throw the stone. Eventually, he said, nobody condemned you. Even I, I set you free. Woman, you are discharged and acquitted. Man, you are also discharged and acquitted. The Bible said God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. So you have been reconciled and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We just come to announce to you that be reconciled to God. We are not the one reconciling you. God has already reconciled you. Hallelujah. So I don't know if your story is like that woman. Or your story is like the Syrophoenician woman. Oh, this woman had a child that was vexed with the demonic spirit. And the painful thing was that she was not an Israelite. And this day she saw the master and she ran to him and she said, help, save my daughter. And the Lord looked at her, listening to me, it was the Lord, not the devil. Looked at her and said, I'm not sent to you. There's no salvation for you now. That's why he needed to go to the cross so that the Gentiles will be included in the gospel of salvation. Oh, can we appreciate God for redemption? And he told her, this is not for dogs. Healing is children's bread. And she said, yes. She was not a woman that had attitude. Women, listen to me. You are destined for more. You are made for more. Don't allow the little, little nonsense that you will meet on the way to stop you from your focus from where you are getting to. Now, this woman would have been able to say, why did he call me a dog? He said, because I came to get healing for my child. No, she didn't do that. She said, sir, even the dogs, even the dogs, did she get the healing? That that office that you are in is the Lord that placed you there. And probably the Lord knows that you have an attitude problem. So he gives you a boss like Pharaoh that will deal with you. Oh yes. He gives you a man that will break your pride and break your spirit. He gives you that thing. That child is not about that child. Every time you go on your knees and you are praying, you think it is about the child. No, it's about the potter remolding you. That when you come out, you will know that it is not the child. It was me that was touched. So the woman, the Syrophoenician woman, had her issues. But in spite of the issues, she was able to go to the Lord. And she was able to get that which she required. Now the Bible also tells us of Rahab. For a lot of us that are pious, if God should give us the opportunity to write Hebrews 11, Rahab's name will not be there. We have judged her. But the Bible called her a woman of faith. By faith, she became the great grandmother of Jesus. <laughs> a woman, even though she was a prostitute, she had sense. She was positioned at the walls. She was a watcher. She knows what enters the city. She knows what goes out of the city. She knows the route to safety. She has heard that there is this set of people coming. And she has talked intelligently. Oh, what's up? You know, she was not just a woman that was made up. When the men came into the city, she asked, what's going on? Oh. There's this new race. We don't know where they are coming from. But they say their God is a God of Israel. And he has done this. And he has done that. She has heard a lot of things. So she knew 
that right now, the only thing is alignment. Oh, woman, did you hear me? Did you hear me? That Rahab was a woman like Ruth that left her people and aligned to a new God. That as a woman, you must be sensitive to times and seasons. Or you must know when to connect and disconnect. Oh, we can be so petty. She's my friend as it was in the beginning. Never shall be what without change. And the Lord is saying, you have dwelt on this mountain long enough. Move. Move. You say no. Change your circle of friends. You say no. For the thing I want to do for you, you can't continue at that level. Four years back, the Lord told me to come to this city to do ministry. And I come in every month. And for a year and, I was coming by road with my assistant. 2015, the Lord told me. He had told me before then. He said, you will leave your job. When I was to be promoted to level 14, the Lord said, let it go. A couple of strong words, clear words. December 2015. I eventually pulled out of civil service. And as I entered Abuja, January, the Lord said, don't do road any longer. You're going to be traveling a lot in your life. And I need your body to be whole and intact. The distance is much. Start flying. And in my mind, you just collected your job. <laughs> in case you don't know, when I even had the job, I was going by road. Missionary. Now that you said I should keep the job aside, you say I should fly. Please God, you love me too much. Too much. Too much. Excessive. And I just announced it. By faith. Because Rahab was a woman of faith. And I declared it. And everybody shouted and clapped in the meeting. And we all said, Amen. As I came down, my assistant looked at me. And she said, Mama, how far? I understood the meaning of how far. Uh, I know you. I know the reality. Fly. <laughs> and I'm a principled person. You follow me through road, you follow me to fly. Now, I wouldn't fly and you would know, no. When I suffered, you suffered with me. When I'm enjoying, you should enjoy with me. So if I'm going to believe God for effort, I'm not believing for one, two. And I told her, the Lord said it. To cut the long story short, I eventually got home. And I was just chatting with someone. And I said, the Lord said I should not do road again. I should fly. He said, really? Every month, I'll give you 50K. I said, wow. Why have I been suffering? And this is like three years, Lord, that the Lord had been doing that. Now, what I want to bring out of the story is that when the Lord said fly, it was because there were some people he wanted me to meet. And he knows that I will not meet them on Guagualada Road. I will meet them where? So if you don't, when the Lord says, disconnect and move, your next level is tied to that instruction. You might be seeing the issues, but the Lord is seeing the blessings that will come. And I can't even begin to tell you the number of persons I have met and ministry connections that have come and doors that have opened just by obeying the word fly, even when there was no money. Rehab was a woman that was strategically positioned at the gate and she was strategic in her thinking. I loved what mama said, that she wanted to be a business mogul. You know, she's not a woman that is so petty. There's some women that when you sit with them, the only thing they tell you is Easter block. And this is the latest. And Genevieve just did that. Genevieve just got lion hands and how many billion? You won't see that one. And this one just did that. And the, oh, that, this is the latest hair. And this is this, this. And this is that, that. See, don't impress others to depress yourself. 
tell your neighbor word, word. Abuja. When I entered the city, I saw packaging. Some people have so packaged themselves out of help. When I see your on point with oil, your on point cloth, your on point bag, and the one I'm carrying is not as on point as yours. Oh, Shabalide, who wants to help who? Everybody is okay. I'm just coming from the city. Help me, oh, I need help. Because even that woman cried out, he said, Help, oh king. And the king said, The Lord does not help you. Don't package yourself and so package yourself out of help. Woman, you are a woman of wisdom. Build your home in wisdom. You may not have today, but you will have tomorrow. Oh, Jesus. I can't tell you where I've come from and where I am right now. I wish you can come to my state. And that is just the beginning of where the Lord is taking us to. But it came by faith that when it is for you to eat palm oil rice with crayfish and dry fish, put small periwinkle. Jesus is Lord. Sweet. Paying a house of whatever, taking your child to whatever, doing whatever, whatever, and you don't have land. Some of you, your landed property. Your landed property. Rapper. When you step up. You step out to landlord's house. Is he a title tenant? You see, no, you don't understand. Lands are expensive. The people buying it, they don't have their head. I've seen that when something is your focus and you cry to the Lord. He begins to position things. He begins to set things. Somebody tells you, gives you more information. Somehow money comes somewhere. And you just, a little here, a little there. Like I tell people, some people are blessed. And they can just build in one day. That's the blessing of the Lord. And we love that. But if the Lord does not give us that way, and he gives you little by little, if they build the house, do they write on the house? Little by little. Build to us. The Lord told me, he said, when you enter the city, I will show you the spiritual structure of the city. When you enter churches, I will show you things that we combat. That some of us are not even able to remember our parents at home. So packaged in the city. And everybody is speaking phonetic. Jesus. Now that's not wrong. But what's the purpose? This woman, Rahab. She was there. But she was intelligent. She was strategic. She was a negotiator. She didn't say, I will help you. She was not a foolish woman. If I help you, what will you do for me? And she didn't negotiate. She was not selfish for herself. I and my family. Woman, man, fight for your family. And then we see a woman I love, Deborah, the wife of Lapidot, a prophetess and a church. Hmm, that's her CV. Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidot, a warrior and a judge. The Bible said, in the days of Shamgar, when the highways were unoccupied, and people went by the byways, who was Shamgar? Shamgar was a mighty man. 
Shamgar was a man that slew 800 at once. But in his day, listen to me, Nigeria. In the days where we have mighty men, our highways are unoccupied. Village life has ceased at Kaduna and Plato State and Zamfara and Yobe while we are busy packaging. When the Debras arise, Nigeria will be saved. We've been waiting for Shamga. But the Bible said, in the days of Shamga, in the days of the mighty men, when they, they, they didn't do anything, the Bible said, travelers were going through Ikoro by ways. Because the highways were not safe to travel in. And this woman, she arose. You see that in Judges 4 and Judges 5. I can't read it because I'm watching my time. She arose as a mother in Israel. Mother in Israel is not the title of the pastor's wife. Mother in Israel is a seat in the spirit. It's a throne in the spirit. It's a place from where you operate from. You earn mother in Israel. You don't insist that people call you mother in Israel. I was watching when they said mama na mama. And I saw one of us run to our mother as a confirmation. That if you have impacted somebody's life. I remember several years back when my daughter was still little. And she came back from school and she says, she was singing, my mother who taught my infant lips to pray. And she said, that's true. I said, what do you say? You taught me to pray. And she continued. That word brought tears that the child knew that the mother was there. And yesterday as I was living here, she sent me a message. Mommy, my hair though. I said, take communion. Go and meet your daddy. Tell him to lay hands on you. Take communion. You are healed in Jesus' name. Paradventure, you still want something. Take paracetamol. She said, I knew that is what he would say. I said, Mimi, you are blessed. <laughs> and when I was, when they were young, at times I would take ill. As I was standing on the word of God, I would call them. God hears the prayer, prayers of children. Come and lay hands on me. Take oil and anoint. That's teaching them. He said, Abraham will teach his children. Oh, how do you wonder that Jacob was running? And the Bible said he lighted upon a certain place. And he took stones. No, go and read your Bible very well. J Abraham had trained Jacob on altars. And it was not just anyhow that he just took a stone. He was running. He was in distress. So when he got to that place, he saw an altar. He said, no, this is my father. This is what my father used to do. Set stones for sacrifice. And the Bible said he arranged the stone and he slept there and had angelic encounter. In the days when the men didn't do much, and I, Deborah, arose a mother in Israel and she took up a song. And she began to summon the tribes. Now I will not be able to read them. I really would have loved to. But when you go home, take out time to read Judges chapter 5. Verse 7 said, until I, Deborah, arose. Verse 9 says that the princes offered themselves willingly. Willingly, that when Deborah knew that, look, we need to do something, she did. She was not a selfish woman that wanted glory to herself. She sent for Barak, the son of Abinoam, and she said, "Come, for the Lord has put this in your hand." And Barak said, "I will not go until you go with me." And she didn't relent. She said, "Yes, I will go with you." And now she now began to declare that the princes offered themselves willingly. Oh, that even the kings in Judges chapter 9, that they offered themselves willingly for the service of the Lord. And then in Judges 12, she said, awake, Deborah, awake, Barak. Sleeping women are awake. For while men slept, the enemy saw tears. 
If you sleep too much, you have issues in your home. Two foolish women in the Bible that slept. One slept so much that she rolled on her baby and he died. The other foolish one slept so much that they collected her baby. She was still sleeping. Hey. When the person collected the baby, they changed the clothes home. Because if they had retained the clothes, she would have said, that's my clothes. She was still sleeping. A little sleep. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands to sleep. Poverty becomes your best friend. That's what the Bible said. Awake! When things are out of order in your home, woman, you are sleeping. When it's like all of a sudden your husband that does not keep late nights begins to keep late night, you are sleeping. When your children, now you might think that I am blaming you as a mother. No, I am not. Because I know the weight and the responsibility of what it takes to be a woman. But listen to me. The Bible said a wise woman builds her home. God calls you wise because you have capacity to build. He won't tell you that you build your home when he knows you cannot do it. A woman is the only being I've seen that can multitask. A woman is the only person that I know that will be pregnant and carrying a child behind and fast and go to church with her husband. And they are coming back from the fasting as they are entering the house. The man is saying, I'm hungry. Oh, Jesus. A woman is the one that will be cooking and sweeping. And remember that the school run. She can do 10 things at the same time. Oh, women, I celebrate you. Without losing their minds. So stop seeing yourself as weak. You are strong. You are strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. I pull out that strength from you. You are not weak. He said the little one amongst us shall be a thousand. And the small one a strong city. You are a woman of resilience. You are a woman of courage. You are a woman of faith. You are a woman of fire. You are not a Z-word mommy. Not a Telemundo mother. And not an African magic mother. You are a woman of the word. A woman of passion. A Deborah. A prophetess. A church. A good negotiator. It was Bathsheba that negotiated the throne for Solomon. Oh Jesus. It was Abigail that negotiated for her husband. Oh Jesus. You are a negotiator. Oh, it doesn't matter who the money comes from. At times you need to go forward for the sake of the home. You must not stand and say, hey, but the Bible said a man that does not provide for his household, leave that thing. Both of you, you are one. So he's providing, you are providing. And Deborah rose, and the Bible said, the tribe of Issachar, verse 15, responded swiftly. But 16, in the divisions of Reuben, Reuben are like our Nigerian senators. The Bible said there was great searching of heart. Those days, when they finished Nigerian march, my late father, who just he's and then we say, Papa, what? He said, Don't mind them. When they are faith, you say they are returning to the drawing board. Always going to the drawing board and drawing nothing. <laughs> the next match, they'll say, We are going to the drawing. You will go to the drawing board and you will draw something. Reuben could not take decision. Have you watched the war 300? That why that woman was trying to negotiate and they were standing for help. Should we go? Should we not go? While they were going back and forth, people are dying in Kaduna and dying in Plato and even dying in Abuja around us. 
Reuben, the tribe of Reuben, God recorded them. They didn't offer themselves. And he said, Gilead and Asher and Naphtali, go home and read it. He said, why did you abode in your comfort zone? He said, Asher stood as a merchant. And uh, uh, Naphtali he stayed there. Uh, Gilead did his own. And then, it was a warfare that began from the earth, entered the heavens. The next thing, he said, curse be Meros, said the angel of the Lord. For you did not come to help the Lord in the day of his fight. I looked at that scripture. I said, how does a battle that started from the earth end with the angels? It meant that when Deborah and the rest were going, that the host of heavens were summoned. And it also means that there are times that the angels want to war. If we don't partner with them, we make them loose. So even when they'll be judged, some of them will be judged for their failure, but we were responsible. So in my imagination, I see that angel going through the tribe of Meros and looking for somebody in Meros that could help him. And there was nobody. And he said, curse me Meros because you didn't come to help the Lord in the day of his fight. Are you that Meros? Are you that Meros? That the Lord has been telling you, come and join me to fight. And you don't want to fight. The Bible said even the rivers, Kishon, the fort, the stars, the fort, the elements, the word against Caesarea. Oh, Jesus. And he said, blessed is Jai, the blessed one. Can we celebrate apostle? He's blessed. Why? Because Caesarea ran there thinking that this woman, she does not know anything. He said, give me water. She gave him milk. She rubbed his head. That was the conclusion of Caesarea. Deborah told Barak, I will go with you, but the victory will be given to another she didn't say it would be given to her. She understood teamwork. Woman, you can't do it on your own. She didn't say the victory will be given to me. No, it will be given to another. Another was Jai. That when you are weak, have a friend that you can lean on. Have a mother that you can talk to. That problem that you are going through in your marriage, she has gone through it. Take it from me. And much more. Don't say, mommy, we don't understand. You know, daddy is a spirit. Really. Do you understand? Because most times we imagine things that she is perfect. He is perfect. Their children are perfect. And when you see them like this, you feel that all their lives, they have had money. They are asked them. Did you hear her when she was saying Gary and Granot? That didn't make sense, yeah? With salt, small salt, and sugar. Some of them, I don't know that life. They add coconut or palm carne. You just sit down, they break her. <laughs> what the Lord has done for me. <laughs> Teamwork. For whatever it is you are going through, there's someone that has gone through it. There's someone to, did you watch that drama? There's someone to hold your hands. There's someone to tell you it is better. So woman, you are made for more. You are meant to rule nations. You are meant to rule. But you will start by ruling your home. Or you will start on your knees. You are a woman of resilience. You are a woman of tenacity. Ah, you are a woman that has stayed in power. Be like Hannah that will go to Shiloh. Even when nobody is here. I believe this place can be made available to you. No pastor to pray for you. No mother to pray for you. Pray for yourself. And see if God will not answer you. Start a prayer movement. By the multitude of the things. You have talked too much. You've complained too much. You've gossiped too much to your friends. This is my husband. I don't know whether I'm a man he marry. Whether I'm a man I marry. People they marry. Me too. I can't marry. That's Ninja Delta by the way. But if you were not married, I remember my maiden name was Paul. When I was in university, they used to call me Fanny Paul, Pastor Fanny Paul. 
Then I got married and became finally a quick ready. When I went for my master's, my lecturer said, ah, because I used to be very small. This small girl, I heard you are married. I said, yes. Huh? So what's your son in now? I said, a quick ready. He said, ah, you left your fine name, Paul, for a quick ready. I said, sir, now me sis, I defy. It's not the quick ready. It's the madam. Hallelujah. Did you see how I did it? That woman, your glory is your husband. That even if he's a Mr. Cockroach, at the missus, that there are some places you enter, the Bible says marriage is honorable, you have dignity because of madam. So when you go home, tell your husband, thank you for making me a madam. I end with Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6. We are going to take it as prayers. I believe the Lord has spoken to us through the lives of various women. You are made for more. But in all these women, I want you to see faith. I want you to see courage. I want you to see strength. I want you to see wisdom. I want you to see beauty. Proverbs 31 says, a woman that fears the Lord. I want you to see that the bedrock of all we do is the fear of the Lord. And the Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb saying, you have dwelt long. You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Woman, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Men, some of you have also stayed long enough at this mountain. I remember a day, a woman, a pastor's wife to be precise, she came to me and she said, mama, I'm tired. My husband had stayed too long where he is. He's a minister and then he was also having a secular job. And she told me a whole myriad of issues in our home. We are just tired. And she used the phrase. He said, it's just like wheelbarrow. When you push it and leave it there, it stays there. I said, so you don't have any problem. And she was like, I said, since you understand that all he needs is pushing. He push. No, and she, she knows me. She just said, that's how you turn everything to joke. I said, but the way you are too serious, how do we solve this problem? So I said, let's pray. And we got up. She thought I wanted to pray one serious prayer. I called her husband in. So, 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 and so. I push you. Move. Move. We move you. Oh, yeah, join me. Two of us. You would have seen us. Very dramatic. Oh, yeah, in the name of Jesus. Move. You can't stay here long enough. By force. By fire. By faith, Jesus, angel, by K, move on, move on, move. On. The next day, I saw him and he calls me wifey. He said, Wifey, how far? I said, Bros, yesterday we released prayer for your head. We move you. You are moved. He, he's used to me. He said, My wife, my wife. Because him and my husband, they are from, we just laughed and left. The next day, he got a contract, one million, five hundred off one. Bagam, I said, Bagam, I said, bro, so my court. <laughs> so some of you, you've dwelt on this mountain. Some of you, you are even the mountain. Who are thou mountain before zero? Some of you are the mountain. So today, I move you. Yeah. I move you in the name of Jesus. The Lord has been telling you, take one step. Take one step. You, have, you, you are like Reuben. If I do it like this, will I fail? If I try it like this, if I do like you, you can't take one step. Move in the name of Jesus. Move in the name of Jesus. Move in the name of Jesus. Some of you, your movement will determine the movement of your husband. Some of you are in ministry. Your movement will determine the movement of the ministry. Some of you, your movement will determine the movement of your children. If you don't take the first step, nothing will have happen. So move in the name of Jesus. You have dwelt too long on this mountain. That's the first prayer point we will take. The next one is Isaiah 54 two. Those two, we pray and I'm out of here. That is my mission. The Lord kept showing me Isaiah 54 too. He said, enlarge. And the word God gave me for guiding light assembly. He said, you have entered into a season of enlargement. 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 
that the Lord enlarges you in the name of Jesus. 